Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. You know, justice is about accountability and consequences. Justice occurs when truth is put to the lie, when the facts and not the politicians tell the story. Justice should always be swift and certain, but in the Obama administration, it is slow and uncertain. And as we found out this week, the Obama administration puts political lies over American lives. We have been waiting for Benghazi justice ever since September 11, 2012. And this week, a bipartisan Senate committee, Democrats joining Republicans, issued a scathing report blaming Hillary Clinton's State Department for deaths that were preventable and for the inadequate security that was provided to her friend, Ambassador Chris Stevens, and three other Americans. The report makes clear that in the months before the attack on Benghazi, the intelligence community provided, quote, ample strategic warning that U.S. facilities and personnel were at risk in Benghazi, that militias and terrorist-affiliated groups had both the capacity and the intent to strike U.S. interests. That from the report. And this from the Pentagon, AFRICOM, CIA, DIA, Stevens Security Detail, Stevens himself, not to mention 20 separate security incidents at that compound in the months before September 11th. But we already knew this, didn't we? We knew there was no protest. And everybody knew it was, there was no protest, except, of course, the New York Times, who would never let the facts get in the way of shielding the Obama administration. The truth? The FBI and the CIA admit they knew from the surveillance cameras. Yet, two weeks later, the president goes to the United Nations to blame the massacre on that despicable anti-Muslim video. Folks... I read this report. The word video is mentioned once. That's it. Once. And that's in connection with a protest in Cairo. But President Obama and Secretary Clinton take out an ad to apologize to the Arab world for this hateful video. And the narrative continues. Susan Rice is given her marching orders to talk about the anti-Muslim video. Think about it. They blame an unconnected video, but they had to agree to this narrative. They knew it wasn't a video or a spontaneous declaration. And yet, the talking points, the speeches, the words whispered in the ears of the families of the dead Americans were all about that despicable video. Why? To mislead us just weeks before a presidential election. Where I come from, the manufacturer of that lie is called a conspiracy. And when the Intelligence Committee said that the deaths were preventable, they were saying that the attack was foreseeable, that the deaths did not have to happen, that they should not have happened. And in doing so, the committee put the responsibility directly in the lap of the Obama administration and Hillary Clinton. Now, you remember her, the woman who was going to get to the bottom of this by appointing an accountability review board that would never interview her. I know you remember her, the Secretary of State, the one logging all those miles, unable to appear before congressional committees because she was traveling, because she had the flu, because she fell and because she had a concussion. And when she finally does show up, she says she never saw the cables sent to her personally, signed by the ambassador, foreshadowing not only how they would die, but the very groups that would kill them. And then, Madam Secretary, you show up four months later after everyone else has given their version of the facts so that all your ducks are in a row. 
and your efforts that night? It turned out we had people getting over that wall in Cairo, doing damage until we got them out. We had a serious threat against our embassy in Tunis. I had to call the president of Tunisia and beg him to send reinforcements, which he did, to finally save our embassy, which could have been a disaster. On the phone with Tunisia? What did I miss? Who died in Tunisia? But then again, you like phones, don't you? Remember this one? It's 3 a.m. and your children are safe and asleep. But there's a phone in the White House and it's ringing. Who do you want answering the phone? I'm Hillary Clinton and I approve this message. But then again... What difference at this point does it make? As a Secretary of State, your job was to protect the people in your charge. You were responsible for their safety and their well-being. You knew they were receiving danger pay because it was a dangerous area. You knew how dangerous this part of the world was. Hell, when you went to Benghazi, you had the Defense Department pre-position assets off the Libyan coast in case you needed rescue. What that tells me is that you understood the danger to yourself, but ignored it when it came to others. That's called negligence. You failed to perceive a substantial and unjustifiable risk that the danger of death existed to the people in your charge. Your conduct was a gross deviation from the standard of care that any reasonable Secretary of State would observe. You disregarded the grave risk to the lives of Americans. You knew it. That's why you didn't go on the Sunday shows. You knew it which is why you waited until everyone else had spoken so you could get your ducks in a row. And you knew it because of the cables from your friend and the deteriorating security situation in Benghazi. You knew it, which is why you appointed your friends to an accountability review board, which friends never even called you to testify. You knew it, which is why no one was ever fired in your department. You knew it because the only one who suffered consequences was the whistleblower who went against your dictates. So which is it? If you didn't know, then you're incompetent. And if you did know, you're guilty of criminal negligence. People, though, are so afraid of you that your name is not even mentioned in the review by the Senate Intelligence Committee. And yet, you say that you take responsibility. But how do you take responsibility when there are no consequences or anyone in your department? Like Susan Rice, everyone on the conspiracy was promoted. But what happened in Benghazi was foreseeable. You had a duty and a responsibility, and they relied on you. They asked you for safety and security. And you breached not only that duty, but you breached the public trust that we have in our government. Now, I am a prosecutor. I have spent my career in the assignment of blame. And I know you won't be prosecuted for any of this. And your boss won't be impeached. But remember this. Justice is about accountability and consequences. The facts have now been told. The consequences have yet to be determined. And in the meantime, we continue to wait for justice.